customer called and was uh, was having problems with not enough water and what we determined was the well pump was running but it just wasn't pumping the GPM that it should have and it's getting a little older typically what we'd have a homeowner do is come downstairs and take a look at the pressure gauge and see if we're void of any pressure uh, if there is pressure then we know that the problem they're having is most likely inside the home if there's no pressure at all and we know that we have power it's usually a problem inside of the well it's usually with the well pump uh, always check for power see if there's a power issue this customer has a three wire pump the control is actually right here on the wall we're gonna be putting a new control in along with the new pump and from there um, either intermittent water low pressure or just no water at all are the typical signs you'd have of uh, a issue with the pump so we decided to change the pump it would pump water but it would take like six seven hours for it to recover completely so they'd have intermittent water use so by changing the pump we're going to be able to correct that problem for the customer All right now we're clamping our well puller to the well casing this is what's going to allow us to pull the pump pipe and wiring up out of the well Snorkel style. Snorkel. These are bleeders and what they're for is the air volume control system. So every time the pump kick kicks on, a slug of air goes into the pressure tank and that's what maintains our air level in the tank. What happens is the bleeders release the pressure after the pump shuts off and it, this short section of pipe drains out and it's that atmosphere. And what happens is when a pump kicks on, this bleeder closes, that bleeder closes and the air that's in this pipe gets compressed and shot into the pressure tank. And that air that comes into the tank every time the pump runs is what maintains the air and water ratio in the pressure tank. So that's one form of, uh, of pressure tank that you can have out in the field. If you have an air volume control pressure tank, you have to have bleeders in the well. The orange mud you see, that's iron oxide. It's naturally occurring iron in the well. And this is what it looks like. This is what will clog interior piping in the home, especially if we don't have any type of a filtration system. This iron, at this level, we really should have an iron filter, and we'll talk to the homeowner about adding that. There it is. Set it right on the casing so you can take a picture of it. And that's a half horse. Well, we got the pump up. This is it right here. And you can see all the iron on it from the well water itself. What we're doing now is we're going to measure the overall depth of the well. We're also going to measure the static water table, meaning where the water is in the casing from top of the, of the grade or, or ground level downward. What's the importance of that? The importance is it helps us determine where to set the pump, and it also tells us how much space we have or how much vertical column of water we have above our pump. So as the water is being drawn down, what we don't want is we don't want the pump running out of water. This is well sanitizer. Because this is a five inch well casing, the pump is gonna take up a great deal of that space and it's gonna be very difficult to get sanitizer below it. So we're going to, we cal calculated, we've got a 70 foot column of water, five inch diameter. We've calculated how many pellets we need to sanitize this well. We're gonna pour them in first, then we're gonna set the pump in place and we're gonna circulate it and let the, let the well be disinfected overnight. Yep, this is our new bleeder, and this is all it is. It's just a little flap. When the water depressurizes, it opens up, allows air in. When the pump kicks on, it closes and prevents water from leaking out of the bleeder. Very simple but effective device. Half horsepower submersible well pump. Speaking. The, the pump is at the bottom, there's a check valve at the pump, and then we have four 20 foot sections of pipe. So we have 80 feet of pipe in the well, and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to put a 90 on here and a piece of pipe, and we're going to run the well a little bit and flush any debris, just get it flowing, see what kind of volume we're dealing with. Well we're inside now, and we're going to put the new control box on that goes with this pump. This one would run it, but uh, since we're updating the pump, we want to update the control unit as well. 
the other pump was taking about six hours to finally reach about 60 psi, which it would eventually do. But internally, what had happened is several of the stages, probably one stage of the pump, had separated from the shaft. So as the motor is spinning, it's lifting water, but not lifting anywhere near the volume that it was designed to. So that's why we ended up pulling that pump out and putting a new one in. You got the bleeders back on here and stuff, so. Yep. So we're all set. Basically what's going to happen now is we get this screwed in. We're going to lower it down, attach it to the pitless adapter, hook it all up, test it, and we'll be all set to go. All right, so we've got our new control in place. The pump is in, everything's hooked up, and the power is about to be turned on. We hear it running now, and we have water coming into the pressure tank. We can hear it. Our air volume control is working correctly. And in a second, we'll see pressure starting to build on the gauge. So we're building pressure. And as soon as it shuts off, we'll start running water at one of the faucets and make sure that everything gets flushed out properly. Outside, we have to install our vermin-proof cap. It'll be the last thing. And the vermin-proof cap helps keep that well uh, from getting full of insects and things like that. So we want to wait 10, 14 days, somewhere in there, and then we'll take a sample. And that should be a, a very real-world sample of whether or not the water is uh, bacteriologically safe. And if it is, we're done. If it comes back unsafe or total coliform positive, then we'll have to uh, disinfect the well again a second time.